Okay friends, to get started on this job, one of the first things we're going to talk about is safety, hands and eyes. After that, I want to let you know that you're going to have to have the rear wheels so they're off the ground. If you're working on the ground with a jack and some stands, you're going to want to make sure that you chalk those front wheels so there's no way that your vehicle can roll off on you. I'm using a lift, so I don't really have to worry about that. Next, you're going to go ahead and put the truck in neutral, put the key as far into the off position as possible, and then we're going to disconnect the battery. Set that aside. The reason why we're disconnecting the battery is because we have to have the truck in neutral so we can turn the rear drive shaft so we can remove it from the rear yoke. Of course, this might take a little while, which of course is going to drain the battery. Now, the next thing we need to do is get under the rear of the truck and we're going to come to the back of the drum brakes. You're going to find a rubber plug. Let's go ahead and pop this right out of the way. And now we're going to have access to the adjustment wheel inside. So now we're going to need a couple tools. I need something with a 90 degree bend and I also need something that's flat that I can stick inside here to make my adjustments. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to come right in along the back side of that adjuster. As I go, I'm going to twist it and right on the other side, there's a little lever that I can push on. It's kind of spring loaded. I can feel it right there. Now I'm going to take my adjustment tool and I'm going to spin the wheel on the inside until the brakes are fully de-adjusted. Okay. Once you get it so this can spin freely, let's do the same to the other side. Now at this point, what we should be able to do is grab onto the drive shaft right along here and spin it freely. Now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and remove the drive shaft from this area right here. To do that, you're going to find four mounting bolts. Obviously, if you're trying to use a ratchet or a wrench, this is going to try to spin on you. So you can just try to hold it with a pry bar or anything the like. Let's go ahead and remove those. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is use a rubber mallet and we're going to give this a couple loving bonks to help break it free. But don't actually hit on this area of the drive shaft. Now we're going to set this aside and hang it so it's out of our way. Now let's take two of our bolts and we're going to start them right into this. Give them a few good threads. Make sure you got plenty of threading into there. Spray down this pinion nut. The next thing we want to do is measure the rotational torque of this. Essentially how much torque it takes to be able to spin this. I'm just going to take my inch pound torque wrench here, put it on there. And then essentially all I want to do is just make it so right as soon as it, I can feel that it wants to click, it also starts to move this. I don't want to make it so it clicks, but nothing actually happens. And I definitely don't want to make it so this thing just turns all willy nilly before it's even ready to click. Once you have that specific measurement figured out, go ahead and write it down someplace because you're going to need it later. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove this pinion nut right here. You're going to notice as you try to loosen it, this is just going to spin all around. And that's what these two bolts are for. Now I can take my pry bar, stick it in here, and that's going to prevent this from spinning on me while I try to remove the nut. Let's remove these two bolts. Let's spray some penetrant inside here. The next thing I want to do is carefully give this a few bonks, bonk, 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 just like this, and just try to get it off. You can see it's starting to come off right now. Now at this point, let's go ahead and remove the seal from this area. You can do that using a seal puller. Stick it right in here and carefully pry this off. Now, once you have this, so it stopped kind of dripping out of there, we're going to continue on to cleaning up the area where the seal is going to ride. You can do that using a flat razor blade. Be very careful. And of course, a rag. At this point, this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to try to get out as much of this gear oil inside this area as possible. And now let's grab our seal. Okay, now it's time to prepare our seal for installation. Take a look along this edge right here. You want to make sure that you have that seal going all the way around it. And then of course on the inside right along here, you're going to have a little spring that goes along this rubber. We need to take a little bit of petroleum jelly and just go right along that springed area. That's going to help keep the spring in during installation. Line that up with the way that it needs to be. We want this to pretty much be as flat as possible with the differential or parallel to the edge of the differential. 
Next, we need to take something that's gonna go ahead and fit over along the outer lip of this. We don't wanna press in on where the rubber is. We just wanna go along this lip. I've got an extra bearing here, comes right out. I'm gonna use my rubber mallet so I don't damage anything. And we'll give it a couple loving bonks along all four corners and just drive it in. Let's wipe off the threaded area here and apply some red thread locker. All right, let's go ahead and get this on here now. I'm just gonna twist it a little bit till it lines up the splines. Give it a couple loving bonks. Now let's clean up all the threads on our bolts. Now let's just take two of our bolts and insert them into the new flange. Let's install our brand new nut. Now let's go ahead and bottom this out. So now I've gone ahead and I tightened this up a couple times and rechecked it. And essentially what I wanna show you is I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here like what I did before. I'm just going to carefully grab onto this and essentially I can pull this and I can still spin it without even getting a click from my wrench. So what that's telling me is that I still need to tighten this up a little bit further. So now right where I have it, you can tell that the torque wrench just barely makes its torque at the same time as it's trying to move this pinion. That's telling me that I have it perfect and the way that I have it set is the way that I originally took it off. Now the next thing we want to do is hop over to each of the wheels and we're going to adjust up the drum brakes. To do that, I'm just going to use my adjustment tool. I'm going to come right in onto that lever there and I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple cranks. While I'm doing that, I'm going to pause every once in a while and just spin the wheel. Once I feel as though there's a little bit of drag on the wheel, I'm going to stop there, de-adjust it just a couple clicks so I don't hear very much drag at all, and then move over and do the same to the other side. Okay, so right now, as you can tell, as I try to spin this wheel, it's under quite a bit of drag. Of course, as the brakes tend to heat up, they're gonna expand and it's gonna increase the amount of drag. So if you have this much drag on your wheel and you leave it like this, you're gonna have seized up brakes after you drive down the road. At this point, I'm just gonna carefully de-adjust it. Just a couple clicks here until I have minimal drag. Perfect. Do the same to the other side. Make sure you put in your rubber plug, remove your bolts, apply some red thread locker to all of them. Okay, now we're going to get ready to put the drive shaft on, but before we can do that, we want to make sure that we clean up the mating surface. Any raised flakes that are on this could potentially cause a vibration driving down the road. <laughs> Copper never sees. There we are. Now we're just gonna line up all four holes here and start in all four bolts before we tighten any of them down. Now we're gonna bottom these out in a crisscross manner and then we'll torque them to 83 foot pounds. Now let's carefully try to hold the drive shaft still, being careful not to damage the U-joint and we'll torque this. Next, we're going to come right up here to the fill plug. Go ahead and remove that, and then we're going to fill it with the manufacturer specified fluid. Now with the fill plug out, you just want to inspect the magnet area there. Typically, you're going to see a whole bunch of little metal deposits on there, but if you see large shards of anything, well, then you probably want to take off the differential cover and make sure everything's okay in there. Now, for the rear differential fluid, there's pretty much two options. You can either use 75-140 or even 80-90. It really just depends on your particular application. If you have a limited slip differential, meaning if I was to take this rear wheel and try to spin it, and the other wheel was spinning the same direction, well then that would tell me that I have a limited slip differential. If I tried to spin this and that tried to spin the opposite direction, then that tells me I have an open differential. If you have the limited slip differential, you're gonna to wanna to use the 75-140 synthetic oil in this. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you use four ounces of friction modifier. If you have the type of differential that we have here, we're just gonna go ahead and add 80-90 gear oil. Now when we fill this, we're only gonna fill it so there's a small trickle coming out of this and then we'll go clean up our fill plug. Okay, let's let this drain out until it's done. In the meanwhile, let's clean our fill plug. All right, so I cleaned up the threaded area on the plug and of course I tried to clean up the magnet as well. Now we can go ahead and put this right in here. And then we'll bottom it out. Okay, right there I can feel that there's a little bit of pressure. I'm just gonna go a teeny bit more. As you can tell, the fill plug doesn't go all the way in until you can't see any more threads. If you went in that far, you went entirely too far. 
Okay, so now it's going to be time to go ahead and clean up all of our mess right here. Of course, we have the area that we filled the differential and down here where I sprayed a whole bunch of penetrant before. Now let's make sure we have clean hands. Go ahead and put this in park and then remove the key. Reconnect your negative battery terminal. All right. Double check to make sure it's secure. Okay, friends, what's left to do now? Take it for a road test.